Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to this special edition of Forbes Middle East. I'm your host, Omar, and today we are joined by radio sensation from Dubai, Chris Fade. Chris, welcome to the show. Yeah, good to, good to see you and I uh, hope you're staying safe. For you guys at Virgin Radio or ARN in general, it's been business as usual or is it as usual? And how are you guys actually staying safe during these times? Yeah, you know what? ARN did a really, really good job. Actually, a great job. So did Virgin Radio together. Uh, obviously, 95% of the staff uh, have been working from home. Uh, our studios have become basically our own safe quarantined area where only presenters are allowed in the studios. Usually the studios would, you, you know, you'd have the sales guys walking in, the marketing guys, the programming guys, but they basically closed it off. Only a selected amount of presenters were allowed in. So we've been doing the show every single morning as, as is, which has been actually a good little outlet for us. Uh, you know, we get to drive somewhere for those, for, for you know, a couple of hours every single morning. Um, it's a game it's a bit of a game of trust as well you know with my colleagues pretty and, and and rossi just making sure that we we are all abiding by the rules and the regulations we are social distancing we are staying at home when we don't need to be doing anything else and uh the show's been going on and it's been going on well and we're grateful to be able to do it and, we, and we're receiving thousands of messages every single week of just people saying thank you it, it, it it's brought a bit of normality to the situation where everything is is somewhat chaotic right now our, our norm has changed but they can turn on virgin radio and there we are chris pretty and rossi doing what we do and it brings a bit of calmness to what we've been told when you look at dubai or the uae compared to other countries or other parts of the world what do you think is the reason why the uae has been able to have such a good grip on the spread of this without really having m many issues amongst people uh, what are your thoughts on that I think we've got to basically go to our leaders and and honestly say thank you. I think what they have thrown into place, and remember, no one was ready for this. No one had a, a plan ready to go. It wasn't like there was a, a book given to everyone and said, well, this is what we do in situations like this. But I believe them being able to deliver the messages as quick as they possibly could. I believe the UAE with our leaders are able to make these decisions a lot quicker than a lot of the other countries around the world where it must go from one group to another to another before it's brought out to the public. I feel like our leaders have got their finger on the pulse. They know what they've got to do. They've obviously got some guidance as well behind them on scientific or precautions that they should take and I believe it's just been delivered our duty as as people working in the media is to make sure that we deliver that message and I think that we've been doing a great job with ARN and Virgin Radio I think getting that message across to to people not only on our frequencies of the radio stations we have nine large radio stations across the country uh, but also through all our social media and you know what you would know this living here in the Middle East, living here in Dubai. I feel like we just get it. We understand. I think we're a community within a community. And I, and I feel like we're all in this together. You know, we don't have these protests that I've been seeing in other parts of the world saying, what are you locking us in for? We're all in it together. And uh, I think the UAE has done a great job and a smart job. And that's why our numbers are so, so low at the moment. But also our testing. We've done over 1.1 million tests. There is no other country in the world per capita of population that's done the amount of tests for COVID-19. So I don't know about you, but I feel safe and secure here. So now people can actually get around between the hours, I believe, of 6 a.m. in Dubai and 10 p.m. What, what do you think is next? Do you actually foresee an end to all of this soon? We're in a situation right now that we haven't been in before, most of us. And I think we're playing it by ear. I think the restrictions have been lifted right now, and I think it's good. Um, we just need to, as a community, make sure that we're still abiding by social distancing. Uh, we've got to make sure that we're still responsible. This pandemic is still going. We haven't beaten it. These restrictions are to make it easier upon us, especially throughout the holy month of Ramadan, for family members in a small group to be able to see each other. Now, we cannot exploit this. We cannot uh, go against these rules that are in place because if so and again i i believe i don't know any intel but i i believe if it was starting to get out of hand that the lockdown and the full lockdown would be thrown into place again and you can look at countries like singapore where they thought they had a control of it 
and uh, you know people went back into their workplace and their and their public and the next thing you know the cases started to rise again and they had to put another full lockdown in so I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't think anyone does. I think we just got to be very, very precautionary. We have to wear our masks, practice our social distancing, and really just do what we've got to do and, and, and work together. You've started uh, Fade Fit Kids, and uh, that organization has been growing quite rapidly. How has this affected you? What has been the plan for Chris as an entrepreneur or uh, Fade Fit Kids as an organization throughout this period? How did you guys cope with it? And what are the plans? What can we expect from you guys in terms of growth uh, post the era of COVID-19? Enough. We turned to just uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we celebrate our two-year birthday for Fade Fit and Fade Fit Kids. Um, you know, during this pandemic, we did have a big pre present, I guess, like sort of presentation, a bit of a party that we wanted to put on for, for everybody, but we actually had to put the handbrake on that. Fade Fit and Fade Fit Foods, um, basically we're a healthy snack company, which I know that you're aware of. And, you know, we've got a, a number of SKUs, a number of products from multivitamins to healthy snacks for adults and kids. I'll tell you straight out, we've seen our online sales actually go up by 25% over the last couple of months. So from, from an online view, it's actually been really good. From an in-store purchasing, it's actually gone up as well. So for foods and, 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 and products like what we put together, uh, people are buying in bulk. People initially felt like they had to panic buy, which we know now that we don't have to do that. But we were seeing a lot of our snacks, especially the kids' snacks, uh, being bought in, in, in bulk which pushed our sales. How did it affect us though? Um, personally, we were okay, but then our, our production, for example, slowed down because obviously the guys that produce our products um, had to maintain their facility to be able to work in a COVID environment, which meant they had to reduce the amount of people, which meant that products weren't being developed as quick as usually. So we had to basically maintain, we were sold out. And as you talk to people, they were saying, Chris, that's a great problem to have. I know it's a great problem, but I didn't want to have that problem. But, but due to the COVID-19 uh, COVID issue that we were going through, it's just something that we had to deal with. So, you know, we're, we're getting by. We've seen the last two months go up. This month has seemed to sort of plateau a little bit. So I do believe that the, the bulk buying and that panic buying, we saw an increase in our healthy snacks. Um, and now I feel like it's just maintaining where we were and where we're at. Now, what are some of the initiatives? I mean, obviously, you being an entrepreneur yourself, what are some of the initiatives that you have taken as Chris um, in terms to support some of the local businesses or startups? Because I was aware of you actually announcing uh, certain things uh, in order to support some of the local businesses. What are some of the examples that you can give us? Yeah, man, like, listen, st startups and, and most companies across the world and the UAE have been affected. Uh, I wanted to play my role. And, you know, I thought to myself, what can I do? What do I have that I can give right now that can be instant? And, and that for me was my social media. You know, I've got fairly large corporations that I work with throughout the year. And I'm, I'm an ambassador for uh, the likes of Samsung, BMW, Virgin Mobile, who I work on a long term basis with where I promote their services and their products on my social media. Now, I wanted to be able to do that for the smaller companies, the smaller companies who I know are struggling right now. So I basically use my own personal platform. I got the uh, the owners of these companies, be it a, a startup, be it a company that's been established for a while here in the country, to send me videos of what their product or what their service is all about. And I basically just use my social media platform to, to as a billboard, as a social media billboard, I was promoting their companies on my social media at no cost. Um, I received over, I think it was 1,700 messages, 1,700 companies from the UAE sent me messages to fadefit.com for, uh, for, for me to wanting to promote. Unfortunately, I've only got to about 400 of them. I'm trying to slowly get through all of them, but it really shows you that, you know, the need. And I think the UAE has, has come together. I keep telling people to, to, to make sure you're supporting your local companies. If you can't get to their restaurants, if you can't buy their products, get them online and help them out. Excellent. Now, we've uh, opened up for uh, questions from audience, and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to take all of them, but I'd like to take one of the questions. Uh, we've got Sarah from Dubai who asks Chris Fade, what is the first thing you plan on doing when quarantine is removed? I'm, uh, I'm going to travel. I'm going to travel. I will go see my family in Australia. 
Uh, I've got a very close family and like many of us right now, we're, we're separated by borders. And uh, as much as I call the UAE home and, and it's my baby and I, and I love it, I have my, my parents, my brother, my sisters, my nephew, my nieces, who I'm, I'm missing tremendously. And, uh, you know, we're, we've all lived this and we'll continue to live through the, the COVID period. But as soon as those borders are lifted and, and it's safe to do so, I will either jump on a plane and go to Australia or I'll bring my parents and my family right here because all I want to do right now is give them one big hug, give them a couple of kisses and uh, know that everything's all right. Chris, thank you very much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for tuning in to this special edition of Forbes Middle East. That was Chris Fade from Dubai. Make sure you tune in to the next special edition next week. We'll see you next time.